wasn't always like this. The Empire is hunting Jedi survivors. Cal, they know who you are. I can't change the past. You trespass, Jedi. A, B, N. It's headphones sale! What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my review for the 2019 Star Wars video game Jedi Fallen Order. So I had a chance to finally play the game via the streaming game platform Google Stadia and while I had my initial reservations about the game and the story and all of that, overall felt like a pretty good Star Wars game by the time it was all said and done. So now that I've finished the game, I've seen the ultimate reveal, spoilers and all of that and what the game is all about, I thought I would give it a review and share my thoughts on the overall experience. So streaming on Google Stadia was very simple and straightforward. Um, I didn't have any hiccups aside from random or a few random uh, st um, bandwidth issues, but that was more of an internet connection issue rather than the um, game issue. Um, overall, it worked. The um, graphics were good. Sound was good. Progression was nice. Um, I did have to spend a little bit of extra time um, mapping some of the buttons just because not all of them were mapped properly while using my Razer Kishi to play the game. But once that was all said and done, um, it worked out nicely. I was able to use the various force powers, upgrade my character using the skill points, and um, otherwise basically just play the game and uh, overall enjoy it. So with that out of the way, um, the game held a little bit of an up and down as far as what I thought about the game. So overall, initially while playing the game, I didn't find anything particularly interesting or intriguing about the story or the game. It didn't really feel like it presented anything well as far as the story taking place a few years after um, Revenge of the Sith until you start getting into some of more of the backstory about the fall of the Jedi Order. You realize that this is a lot of during the time of the Empire and the Inquisitors, which when you get to that point, you realize or you hope that at some point Darth Vader is going to show up and he ultimately does. So that actually was a nice touch at the end of the game, but it doesn't seem like it's very well balanced as far as getting interested in the characters or wanting to learn too much more about what they're all about. The It felt more like, or ultimately when they did start to get more into the details of the stories of the various characters, I actually started getting more interested in the um, master and apprentice relationship between Sari and the second sister so I actually kind of wanted to see more of that story and have the game built around that. Um, conversely when they did have more information about Cal and his um, former master and then escaping from the cruiser how he ended up on Bracca and all of that that is actually when the game started get, um, getting pretty good and that's all basically in the second half of the film so for me, that's kind of why it makes it a tough game to review because the first half of the game was really slow and hard to get behind, especially when they introduce um, Cal and his friend Prof on that first planet. And with that, I kind of wanted more. I, would, I kind of would have liked a lot, something along the lines where Prof knew Sari and the captain of the ship they get off the planet and when they get to the second planet, the initial planet where you learn that you have to get the holocron and all of that, is where they're ambushed by the Inquisitors and that's where we lose Prof. So it kind of just felt like they, did, they didn't give Prof enough time to uh, live and breathe or enough time to learn more about the relationship with him and Cal. And alternatively, if they had started the game with Cal um, crash landing or escaping from the uh, Republic cruiser, landing on Bracca and then team meeting Prof who took him under his wing or they became um, friends as outcasts or something along those lines, that would have made a good start to the game and at least given a good basis to have something interesting about the game. If some of this starts to sounds a little bit familiar, it is kind of along the lines of 
Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, where you start off the game not having any memories that you're Darth Revan. You escape from the ship with a Republic hero in the form of Carlo Nassi. You, let, you crash land on Terrace. You have to find a Jedi Bastila. And so for me, have, the story ultimately works nicely along those lines that in the second half of the film because you're going on all these various planets you're exploring leveling up rediscovering your force power so the parallels to Knights of the Old Republic are there but then it didn't feel like it was as well executed um, the graphics throughout the game are very nice so I can't really I'm not complaining about that at all ultimately the story works out fine but it's just how it was presented so for me a little bit of rejigging the story would have made it for a more interesting experience. Um, reading online in general, the game was very favorably reviewed. So for me, it's like, you know, giving the game a, a grade of about um, 80 to 85% um, percent is not unreasonable in general. Like I said, it's a good game. Overall, it works, but it just felt like the story didn't um give the characters enough time to breathe or and they were not set up enough to the point where it's it was easy to care about them in the first half of the game a lot of the planet development was slow but i it's hard to neg um, give negative points there because if you're playing knights of the old republic one you spend a whole lot of time on terrorists to the point where it does feel like it gets slow but one and boring and you're wondering if you're ever going to get off or if the whole game takes place there but once you get off terrorists is when it starts to pick up but then there's enough of the game after that to the point where it's easy to um, get past all of that initial stuff on Terrace. So that's kind of where it felt like they tried to go, but it didn't really work as well. But then in Knights of the Old Republic, you are given cues to speak with your teammates. It, de it develops a story and the initial characters to the point where you do want to learn more about them. Here's kind of more of a forced learning of the game. So... Like I said, ultimately grading the game, um, I would give it about an 80 to 85%. In general, it was the graphics were good, sound was good, um, upgrading the, your character's points, the whole skill tree thing was good, save points in the form of uh, revitalizing your health was good. Um, and otherwise, that's the overall plus of it and then basically and by, by the time you get to the second half of the game you're visiting all these different planets like dathomir which was a particular good one ilum was good and then going back to bogano and all though that was decent enough and then ultimately going to the inquisitor hideout on Nur on the one of the moons of uh, mustafar was good so i in general all of that worked good when they picked up the pace to figure all to do all that it's just that the initial setup was really, really slow, so that's kind of why, why for me, I had to take away some points. But if the, in the remake of Knights of the Old Republic, they keep all of the same story elements and gameplay and all of that, but bring in the graphics from um, Jedi Fallen Order, maybe even use the skill tree system, I wouldn't be against that. But they would have, to me, they would have to keep the story because that's the biggest part of Knights of the Old Republic that was very very good so to recommend the game I would say if you're a Star Wars fan I would definitely recommend it um, but just be warned that the initial part of the game is going to be very slow especially the initial parts of the training were fine but then once you get off of Bracca and go to Bogano I want to say or not or wherever that you ultimately end up finding the holocron that first planet after um, you start the game on the initial world is in the, in the Imperial Junkyard, the planet after that. It's going to be really slow, but once you get past that and um, start playing a lot of the rest of the game, it will definitely pick up, so um, you should be good to go from there. If you want a good um, visually appealing sci-fi game, then definitely um, it's still good, worth a shot. Um, a lot of it's not really going to make too much sense. Um, just because it is a Star Wars game, it does require having to know a um, little bit like about the Empire and um, Darth Vader. Not necessarily too much about the Inquisitors but um a little bit to know that they exist and they're run by vader um what who the jedi are the sith are what the what force powers are and things like that but 
if you treat it all along the lines of um, witches and magic and things like that, you should be okay as well. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, did you like, dislike the game? Did you like the story and graphics or not like them all at all or anything like that? Then you can comment on this post at on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And if you become a supporter on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01, then you'll get um, an update on upcoming content as far as what the next review is going to be, what the next video game is our video game gameplay is going to be which um much like jedi fallen order will be found on the youtube channel at youtube.com slash patel 01 but thanks for tuning into this particular episode 